thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale modeling tips on the planet. This time, we're going to join John Martin at the Mid Michigan Model Makers, care of uh, the studios of Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan. And he takes an in depth look at how to apply uh, pigments to uh, figures in order to paint the eyes and some of the facial features to bring out the best in your figure modeling kits. So, I'll let John take it away. Uh, today we're going to be doing a figure painting demo. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the eyes and the face and while I'm going to do one in a larger scale, a 120 scale, um, the rest of them are going to do it in a 135th scale and see if we can figure something out. All right, so <clears throat> what I'm working on here, I have a Michael Roberts 120 scale. This is a, a World War II Marine sniper, scout sniper. So he's kind of dressed like he's probably planted on some volcanic ashen rock in the South Pacific. His face is going to be a little red. And these guys, I pulled this out, some Germans, so we're looking at Europe, World War II, same time period. Um, and this is going to come into play uh, with the skin tone that I'm going to use for a base. So what I used, I'm using a combination of Andrea and Vallejo acrylics. And what I've done is I've primed up the pieces and we're going to but hopefully give you some basics that are going to kind of get you down the road and then you just got to just start working at it, keep playing with it. Figures. This is some uh, ultra varnish matte from AK and one drop of this mixed in and your clothing and everything dry completely flat. It really, I mean, the Vallejos dry a little more flat than the Andreas. But when you add this to it, instead of the water to thin it down, it goes completely flat. So, all right, we're going to get started here. So basically, with the eyes, you're going to start by doing the whites of the eyes, but don't make them white because they're going to look bug-eyed if you do. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to use pale sand as your base color. Okay? Yeah. So you guys watch what I'm doing, okay? Yeah, so I made that that way so that they could see it up on the screen a little better, okay? So you're going to get your brush a little bit wet, and you want to just kind of dribble off the excess onto your paper. And then you're going to take a little bit of the paint, kind of work off some of the excess, and then what we're going to do, just so I can see. So you're just going to kind of paint in... And don't worry if you you blotch it out. This part here, you might get a lot of goobers around. You'll see it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay because the way we uh, way we cut this back, it's not going to matter. You always do the eyes first, John. You always start well. At least. The instruction I've been given, so everybody has their own way of doing things, but the eyes are usually the easiest to start with. And usually, well, this, this particular bottle of Vallejo always seems a little thin. I don't need to thin it much. So it usually ends up taking a couple of coats to get in there. And the good thing about acrylics and the bad thing is that they dry really fast. So if you're working quickly, you can dab out mistakes with some extra water and wick it away. Um, if you're working fast enough. The other thing is drying quickly allows you to move along a little faster too. So we'll just wait for that to kind of dry out a little bit. I heard him. I was just answering Chris or Aaron here. So this, uh, the boys are using a, I think a 2.0 and a 3.0 brush. Mine's about the same. This is um, from Citadel. Uh, John got this for me when I was down there. This is a, a size S. It compares about the same. Um, I was using like a 10-aught brush because it had the thinnest. I'm like, but it doesn't carry any paint on it. 
So I'm barely using a 10 out anything that small. It's for very, very small, small stuff like the dot of the iris or the dot of the pupil. But then I'm having better luck using a piece of sandpaper and whittling down a toothpick and just touching it to get that pupil to pop out. And as long as you keep the options sharp, you can get some good accuracy, don't I? Yeah. All right, so the next part, you're going to take... Same deal, kind of get that, keep that brush a little bit wet. And you're actually going to make this part here with the black, you're going to make it as big as the eye is going to be, the color of the eye, okay? Because then on top of that's going to go the color, and then on top of that's going to go the pupil. So you'll see how this comes oh, together. So we color the entire eye nope. black? No, nope. you know, on yours, because it's so small, I would just do a little dot. Try just a little dot in the center. Okay. So the other thing too with the eyes is if you're going to leave some yellow, leave it underneath the bottom because if you study someone's eyes or some figures, you're going to see that that's where the white is, is underneath, not on top. And again, if you, if you make kind of a blob, it's okay. And that looks pretty bad. <laughs> But when we start cutting these eyes back, you'll see where you'll cover up a lot of your sins that you do early on. Well, once we get far enough into the process, you're going to see that we can cover them up without a lot of trouble. Yeah, he looks like something out of Cybertron. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let that dry for a second, and then uh, today everybody gets blue eyes. So this right here is uh, Vallejo gray-blue. So you want to take the gray-blue out to the edges of the black. So they, all you see is a thin black ring left that would accentuate the margin of the eye. Yeah, once it dries, we're just going to do a dot in the center. And then when we start cutting it back, you'll see how it... Uh... With the blue? No, we're going to cut it back with a completely different color. One that you wouldn't really expect. Next thing you're going to do, guys, is just do a little dot right in the center. Now, if you had to start over, would you wash that all off or just paint over it with white? Uh, you know, if it is... I guess it depends. If you start... The first time or two, I might just go back over it with the pale sand and get the yellow back in the eye and start again. But if you do it more than a couple times, then it starts to thicken up, and then I just scratch it out and start all over again. Mm. So this is acrylic, yeah. Oils are easier to blend, but once you get the hang of acrylics, it works out pretty good too. And the whole reason I started figures is because my hand brushing skills were very poor. So I wanted to learn how to hand brush better. Try that hand brushing. Yeah. Shake all over the place. So with this, I'll just get a little dab. To do flames. <laughs> <laughs> do flames on the side of your car. <laughs> no, not talking about flames, Jack. Just a little dab on that toothpick. Just like tank. So do you sharpen your toothpick on a sand stick? <coughs> That's what I just did. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should and I would just do the video a little bit better. Oh, that one just got boogered up, so let's so see if I can wash it out. There you go. That's a nice thing when the, the paint is still wet enough. You can just wash it out. Just let it dry for a second. Paper. 
All right. Well, it's not looking the greatest, but we're just going to, I'm just trying to get you the idea and we're going to keep going. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut back the upper eyelid right here with some uh, color from Vallejo called mahogany brown. This is going to provide a shadow into the top of the eye and it's going to cut the top of the eye bag back so that all the paint spillage I just had over the top of the eye all of a sudden that just disappears underneath the brown and go oh there's an eye there. It provides the shadow. And you keep cutting it back that way. So got much there. You won't need a whole lot, just a dab. All right. All right, so with this one, this will be a little tough because of this guy's helmet's on, but basically I'm going to come in here. Just cut that eye bag right back. These eyes just a little bit more normal looking now. It doesn't look like a bug coming out of the ooze or something. So the base color that I used for the f is uh, on the skin is a beige red from Vallejo. So to further cut the eye bag back, we're going to use the beige red and use it on the lower eye bag. Just point that out on your face. What you're talking yeah, these, about. These, yep. These technical and that have terms. Right, right here. Under the under the eye. Okay. Under the eye, and it's the just bags of the eyes. it's basically uh, yeah. we'll go back we'll go back to the darkening we'll get to the darkening and highlights as we keep moving forward, but this is just to kind of create the margins of the eye a little bit cleaner. Okay. Yeah, he looks sad. <laughs> but it's World War II, so everybody was, you know, weren't really happy. I'm here I can touch this up because I hit his side of his nose with the pale sand. Doesn't look like that black was very well defined there in this particular eye, but All right, so now we're going to start mixing some paint. <laughs> All right, All right, guys, this is how we're going to mix some paint. I'm going to give you a little bit of beige red and a little bit of mahogany brown, okay? So if you remember just a minute ago, the mahogany brown is the one I used on the upper eyelid, and the beige red is the base color. So mixing the two together, it's going to mix in with the base color, and when you're shading you're going to shade your highs and lows, the next level of paint with what your base color was because it keeps that base for you so the, the tones come out the same. So you mix a little bit with this and here, let me, I'm going to put some right next to you guys here, just a touch. Christian, you can mix both of those together. Take a drop of water and mix both of those together with your brush. And then when your brush loads up with a lot of paint, wipe it off on your napkin, okay? And then go back and get some paint that you're actually gonna lay down on your, your subject with. So I'm gonna mix some in here. And what you wanna remember to do is just to kinda keep it thin. 
when you really get down to the shading, you're going to thin this out so much it's going to look almost clear. It's going to barely have any color in it. And then you just keep layering it until you build up your color base and your blending. And I'll show you Should some I technique as we're doing. You can mix that whole thing together, bud. Just get her done. Add another drop of water to it. Yep. Yeah, you can do that. I do that a lot. What he's doing right there, I get a drop on my finger and just touch the touch the pile with a little bit. So with this newly cut back beige red mahogany brown, I'm going to take and I'm going to come down the side of the nose. And I'm going to continue <clears throat> right along the crease line right here that we all have like right this part of the cheek, the front of the face. And don't worry if it looks blocky or there's margins, that gets blended out later on. So I'm also going to touch just a little bit right here this little shaded area between his eyebrows unless you're making someone who's a unibrow you can just go all the way across come across and just a little bit under like right underneath the nostrils too right there okay like I said don't worry if it's looking like too streaky or a line of paint it's gonna <coughs> blend out and you'll see how we're gonna shade that as we keep moving forward yeah, but you're doing all right. How you doing there, Christian? You along? I'm old, man. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to hit into our first uh, highlight. So I'm going to use... flat flesh and this one's a little thin coming out of the bottle as well but we'll start cutting back I'm gonna take some of the highlights right on the top of the eye lower eyelid like that where the the light hits the eye top of the cheekbone and alongside that line that we just put in for the the crease in this in the front of your face there on either side of your mouth <laughs> That one sounds pretty thin. It did. You heard it. Yeah, I heard it. All right. And even the, John's right. It sounds thin. We're still going to thin it just a little bit too, though. You don't want to work. You don't want to work thick because it's going to lay down those those dried lines. And those going to make those edges sharp and they're harder to blend out trust me you'll, you'll make this <laughs> it looks a little bright that's okay I'm gonna blend that out then you're gonna take that line down the side of that cheek either side of that shadow line <clears throat> And then repeat on the other side. Seems to be a little more pain on this one than this side. That's okay. I know it starts to look a little war paintish, but that'll blend out. That's a little too much there. There we go. So to blend out, you're just going to dry brush it out towards the outside edges? Uh, actually, no. You're going to use just thin layers of the paint. Uh, it's going to be slightly colored. And it will... Too much of it's running in there, on there on me. Um, this side's starting to go wrong. But so to kind of get rid of that, you can see I'm just kind of stippling it out right there. Yeah. Now when this dries, 
it looks pretty bright right now, but as it dries, you'll see more of the basic skin tone come through. Is that because it's so thin or because it because just dries Because it's so thin. Darker. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> So these are just these are just some some basic guidelines. Um, you're gonna constantly kind of go. You're gonna find yourself going back and forth and back and forth with because um, one's gonna look too high. Like if you look at this guy right now, his right side of the cheek looks a little bit brighter than the left side. You need the X-band player they stand next to the door. So. But you see it's drying, it's kind of that brightness is kind of going away yeah. on that right side. But these thin layers, as they build up, they're going to catch the light, and it's going to start to look a bit more natural. <laughs> the way these things always go for me is it just looks blocky as all get out. It looks like, you know, a two-year-old was painting it. And it's just blotchy, and then you just kind of keep working it, keep blending, and as you go, then all of a sudden it starts to come alive a little bit and then as you keep building on the areas that you want to focus on then you start to get a little bit more realism out of it but it builds up slowly and you just got to be patient as you do it otherwise you can just get kind of disgusted with yourself a little too quickly let me try to throw in a little bit of a reddish highlight to kind of paint that again I'm going to use beige red You guys can try this too. Just kind of like smoothing things out. Yeah, I'm just going to try to. I brought a couple of different shades of red with me. I got this one's called a salmon rose, this one's a brown rose. I think I'll use the brown rose on this one. So basically, what I want to do is just catch a little bit of the paint. with a wet brush with some, a drop of water in it kind of mix the two together until I get a hue that I'm ready to put down what I'll do is like often I'll do like an initial mixture just to kind of get a base color out of it and then I'll wipe it off my brush and then I'll come in here from the side with it much thinner and just catch some of the paint for color I kind of took the beige red and gave it like a light brush over. Yeah, absolutely. So you can see on my palette how much thinner it's getting. Washes over washes over washes. Basically, yeah. Strategically placed washes. Yep. Thin layers. Gives it more of a translucent effect, which is what your skin really is. It's right. layers, not layers of thin. So now I'm just kind of. Just building a couple areas, I got to get better at this. And then I started picking up. I had a couple of uh, um, figures that I only paid a few bucks for. A couple that were five and ten dollars that I picked up at shows. Guys selling them out of their collections, and I just started using those. And you know, it's just a bit of practice starts getting good. Now this side is actually starting to tone up for me a little bit. This is actually looking pretty good here. Oh, on, the, on his left, left side of his face? You're on the left side of his face there, you can see. Just started to pink it up a little bit. Yeah. It's just everything, it's all subtle changes until you get, you know. Looks like it's been cold. Yeah, well, in this case, this guy's sweating these hotties, I don't know, on Guadalcanal or something, and at least that's the theory. Right on the ball of the nose is usually a little red, just tops of the nose, so you're just doing little touches. And one thing that I forgot to do, I'm going to go back and try to catch a little bit of it, is with that flat flesh, thinning that out, the bridge of the nose, 
You don't want to go down the whole way down to the ball, but just use the side of your brush. Kind of build a small highlight on the top of his nose. That's even a little bit much, but we can. So when that dries out, then other areas of the face that you know we're going to catch highlights. You look back at the picture, look at people's faces, and you'll see those areas that you're going to highlight and dark. And then it's just a matter of blending the colors as you go along to get the effect that you want to, to want to obtain. So that's kind of a basic, that's really just kind of the basic premise of basic figure painting. It doesn't take a, a whole lot or in particular, it doesn't take anybody with a lot of talent because that's not what we have here. <laughs> well, there you have it. We hope you've enjoyed these scale modeling tips from Right On Replicas. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Or you can find us on Facebook or at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.